white privilege. It is a term that has been thrown around ad nauseum in recent years as a mechanism for social justice. Those who use this term often and levy it upon others see it as a concept that exposes the biases in society that allows inherent favoritism and greater standing to people with light skin and European ancestry. While many of those who are of light skin and have European ancestry view this term as derogatory, dismissive, and a concept that will inversely affect the opportunities of their children in future generations. I believe that neither one of these beliefs is accurate at all. In fact, I believe that the concept of white privilege that has been allowed to gain prominence in recent years is a carefully crafted narrative which will ensure white and European global dominance for many years to come. White privilege is not a new concept. In fact, this idea was injected into the public forum as early as April of 2006 when it was used in a debate on the highest rated cable news show at the time, The O'Reilly Factor. That you fear your I don't white, fear anything. Your white privilege will I no just longer want to exist. rule the law. Rule the concept of white privilege was introduced into the mainstream media in the early to mid 2000s. However, it only began to gain traction in true public discourse in the mid 2010s, a full decade after its introduction. The real question that nobody asks about this is why would a liberal progressive leaning media sit for so long on a news story that clearly draws interest and in ratings, as we have seen in its recent coverage. This, I believe, is because the narrative of white privilege is not one that is a net benefit for social justice and a mechanism to even out the social playing field amongst races. It is actually a concept that further enhances white and European hegemony in culture and society. In order to understand why the concept of white privilege is a strategic narrative which actually serves as a benefit for white people and not the other way around, first you need to understand what it is and how it is utilized by people on all sides. White privilege is the belief that there are inherent social and cultural advantages bequeathed to white people. The reason for this advantage? whether it is deemed genetic or simply due to a place occupied in society, is of no importance. What is important is the belief that the advantage, for whatever reason, exists. The definition of white privilege states openly and unapologetically that there are people who are born with advantages over others based solely on their color of skin and heritage which is a concept of traditional white supremacy. The ultimate irony is this term has been so cunningly utilized that it is being propagated vociferously by people who are not white and or of European ancestry, and these people believe that they are using this concept as a means of taking down white privilege. In actuality, their usage and belief in the concept of white privilege has the pragmatic opposite effect, meaning that they are openly telling people who are not white that they are not as privileged, for whatever reason, as those people lucky enough to have been born white. This rhetoric, when disseminated for long enough, creates distinct and deeply grasped castes which are accepted by all parties in society in which non-white people occupy a strata that is distinctly beneath that of white people. In other words, the many non-white people who are insisting that white privilege be eradicated or assuaged are unknowingly promoting white supremacy and white superiority by openly stating that there is a gap in the first place. However, the utilization of the subversive white supremacist ideology that is embedded in the white privilege narrative is not solely confined to people of color who are against white privilege. 
It also extends to so-called white allies who believe they are in the fight to end white privilege as well. Amongst white people, there is a strongly defined line of those who believe in white privilege and those who don't. Those who don't believe in white privilege and don't believe they have any privilege do not see a need to deal with a problem they feel does not exist. Now, white people who do believe in white privilege, on the other hand, they believe it is real, that it needs to be addressed and then reduced or removed, and most importantly, believe that they have white privilege themselves. This belief amongst white allies fighting against white privilege means that they have internalized and in most cases openly stated their firm belief that they are superior to their allies of color. They freely state that by their birthright, they have privilege that non-white people do not. Now, by this metric, they already see themselves as in a higher strata than the people they are purportedly helping. The firm belief in the occupation of a higher stratum than those who are non-white can become so sick and twisted that it can transform into people literally stating that they have the ability to protect non-white people using their special higher caste status called white privilege. White allies against white privilege actually believe that they have some sort of superhero-like powers of protection that people of color do not have simply because of the color of their skin, and in turn believe that they can protect these poor people who don't have the privilege of being white because they can't help themselves. People are even running for office on this cast principle. Now, to me, there is no more of a patronizing gesture than offering protection to people who didn't ask for it simply due to a difference in melanin. The question that naturally arises is why? Why would the narrative shift to this white privilege idea at this moment? Why now? The reason for this is simple. Demographics. In 35 years, the USA will be less than half white, meaning white people will no longer have overwhelming demographic power in a few short decades. Therefore, without demographic power, white people will need to maintain psychological power over the population in order to retain their sources of cultural and social power. The way to maintain power when you are no longer the majority population is to have every other group believe and accept that one group, in this case white people, have privileges that others do not, no matter what position of society they actually occupy. Also, this accepted belief in an innate privilege specific to white people will help assuage the actual demographic damage that a lessening white population will otherwise have to face in future generations. If a society truly believes it is inherently better or more privileged, if you will, to be born white, then future generations in which children are split in whatever manner between white and Asian or white and Latin ancestry, the two largest growing minority groups, then it is more likely that the child will voluntarily choose to more closely identify with his or her white European heritage and quote unquote act more white as many half white half Asian kids in the modern day are accused of doing. White privilege is a tool to permeate tacitly understood white superiority. For instance, if you look at most objective metrics, East Asian people do much better in nearly every regard than white people. On average, they are better educated, make more money, less likely to be homeless and drug addicted, less likely to be from a broken home, and on and on and on the advantages go. However, there is no concept of Asian privilege, nor will there ever be for that matter. 
Asian success is not important and will never be underscored by the broader population as Asian privilege because there is no concerted effort to make the public believe and accept that there is inherent advantages to being born of Asian descent. Now, many will point out, correctly, that there have been many significant drawbacks to the white population due to the idea of white privilege being unrolled and accepted by many in Western society. For this observation, you are correct, but there is a reason why there is an emphasis being placed on diversity and granting more opportunity to people of color in white dominated industries such as Hollywood films and news media while there is no outrage over the lack of diversity in the makeup of the NBA and certain segments of pop culture. This is because the deployment of white privilege as a strategic narrative is tantamount to a chess match. As a result of this strategy, there will be short-term losses in the white community in terms of pockets of people who lose out on employment opportunities in certain fields due to quota hiring and the like, but when viewing this strategy with a long-range lens, these losses are just sacrificial pawns in the long-term chess game. The true objective is worldwide acceptance for the innumerable generations to come that there is and will always be a unique privilege to being born with light skin and European ancestry.